good morning. Hope you're all okay. Sorry I'm a couple of minutes late, had to run off to the postman. Um, and I have to apologise in advance because I've got a delivery coming. Santa and his helpers just keep on sending me stuff this week and something's coming between 10 and 11, obviously. Um, they clearly don't watch Totally Beats channel, do they? Um, good morning, everyone. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Anne. Camille. Good morning, Kitty. Hope you're not lost in that craft room of yours. Good morning, Thelma. Hi, Paula. Gwen. Helen. Lots of you already. Morning, Edward. Hope you are all okay. I've got some really exciting jump ring packages for you today. They are absolutely huge. Um, we've got some beautiful new jump rings for chainmail. Good morning, Jean. Hi, Lucy. Why am I thinking it's Wednesday today? I spent the whole day thinking it was Sunday. I mean, I say the whole day, the first few hours. Um, good morning, Carol. I just can't get my head around days of the week at the moment. It's all a bit manic and I've had a little bit of time off a few days away from the studios. So normally that keeps me in check uh, and I'm not this morning. I look like a scarecrow this morning. Goodness. Um, good morning, Carol. Hi, Jenny. Okay, so I'm going to show you our new jump rings. Um, they are a beautiful, highly coated jump ring. So we're really hoping that these are going to last you for a very long time. I've also just realised that I didn't grab my head and eye pins and my ear findings, but I'll get I'll get them in a minute when we uh, when we get going. So I'm going to make um, a pair of earrings today using the helm weave, uh, which is really beautiful. Uh, Kitty's in craft room heaven right now. Says Lucy. I know. I wish I was there. Um, good morning, Pamela. Hi, Sandra. Morning, Lorna. So we've got lovely jump rings. I'm going to show you them on the website first of all. And then I will uh, get to making a pair of earrings. I thought we'll do earrings because they're a really nice quick fix. Anybody who has um, kind of been sitting on the fence with chainmail, haven't given it a go yet. I've got some beautiful projects coming up uh, with chainmail, even if I do say so myself. Gave you a little sneak peek of the pendant that I'm going to be making for January's uh, bead club project. I'll show you that in case you missed that on Sunday. Um, so we'll do a nice little pair of earrings today. It's a beautiful and actually very simple weave to master. Um, <laughs> Kitty said, yes, I guess that means you're stuck in the study, lost in all your goodies. Um, and I'm going to show you because we've got lots of colours. Now we've colour familyed them up um, so that you can get your bundles all in one colour. Um, but they're amazing value for money. I don't think... When I saw these coming in and um, Kitty and Simon sent them to me, I was expecting them to be quite expensive. And when I've gone on this morning and seen it, I had a little giggle with excitement. Um, oh, Camille says she loves, she loves chainmail. You're gonna love these, Camille. Oh, look, sorry, that was me trying to turn down my volume. Okay, so um, as usual, categories down to Facebook tutorials and there you will find everything we have been up to since March. Can you believe it is nearly the end of the year? And do you know what, guys? This is my last Facebook Live with you um, before Christmas. I can't believe it. Uh, Chainmail. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and tally up how many lives I've done. I thought, I'm going to have a little look and see how busy we've been this year. How many shows I've had, how many lives I've done. And then uh, I'm going to sleep it all off over Christmas. <laughs> okay, so these are the jump ring packs. £7.50 was an amazing price anyway, down to 6.45. Now we've got black, champagne gold, gold, rhodium, rose gold, and silver. And I will show you each of these live so you can see the very subtle change between some of the golds um, and also the silvers as well. So let's go to champagne gold. Uh, you are going to get just over 850 jump rings. So it's approximately 875. Well, that is going to last you a long time. Uh, you've got four by one mil, four by 0.7 mil, six by one, eight by one, and 10 by one. So you will get five bags. So you've got all of those sizes. So the first number is the millimeter of diameter. The second number is the gauge, the thickness of the wire. So you've got two lots of four mil, six, eights, and tens. This makes this the perfect little goodie bag and little starter kit, maybe even an experimental set so that you can have a look at a load of weaves. Now, I think we were going to put the download uh, for my chainmail booklet in there. I will ask Kitty and Simon 
to maybe add that into the category a little bit later on today because um, earlier on in the year I produced a booklet that's got eight different types of weave. So we had Byzantine box, Mabias, knotted Mabias, helm and a few others, spiral, <laughs> I can't I can't actually remember them all, um, but it's a fantastic little booklet. Um, I think it's £8.99, you've got all eight of those in there, and then you actually have um, three sets of full jewellery, so necklaces, bracelet and earrings, and these earrings are also in there. Um, oh, Kitty's saying, let's guess how many lives Sarah's done this week. Okay, do you know what I'm going to do? very impromptu and I'm sure Kitty won't mind. If you guess the right number of lives that I've done this year, I will send you my earrings. We'll pick a winner at random and my earrings from today, I will post out to you. We'll pick a random a random winner. I'll do it all in a live. Um, let's see that, feeling Christmassy, why not? Um, Mina says, good morning. Sorry, was on Facebook chatting about 12 days of Christmas. <gasps> That is so fun. The 12 days of Christmas is going to be amazing. It's a nice little treat for all of you. Um, we um, put together loads of different kits and over the 12 days of Christmas, Kitty and I are going to be with you making them all. So it's your little your little life fix, but it also means you've got the bits and pieces to go along with us as well. Okay, so I'm gonna show you these colors live. I think I'll just show you the four millimeter um, because um, they they are one that that I absolutely love using um, and I'm going to show you my bracelet as well. lots of people guessing um, okay so what I'll do I'll take all of your comments anybody who guesses right and then we'll pick a winner at random that'll be really interesting and then I will send my earrings to you okay so I'm going to turn you down so that now why isn't oh Sarah Hang on, it'll help if I plug in my phone, won't it? Please don't tell me out of how many of those lives I've been professional. <laughs> Not very many. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to mute you guys soon as well because the blimmin' delivery's coming. Okay, so let's have a little look-sees. Um, jump rings. So these are the gorgeous colors that we have. Now I've taken a formula out of here so that I can show you. Okay, so you've got the bright silver, you've got the rhodium, so that's the difference between the two. I'll spill a couple out. I won't do too many because I don't wanna mix them all up too, too much. So bright silver and rhodium. So if you don't like a bright, bright silver, or maybe you are making male pieces as well, so unisex jewellery, something a little bit more masculine, these are fantastic for it. So this is the black, the bright silver, and the rhodium. Oh, who's saying they've always got trouble with chain mail? I hope that this will fix it for you. The earrings are just such a nice little fix now the subtle change between the champagne and the rose is really really subtle in the four mil because they are so tiny but there is a slight difference and actually it's more visible in the larger ones let me get these out for you i just want to show you them live because it's going to give you a much better idea of which ones you really want to go for. Let me move these ones out and I'll show you the gold. Because I'm not sure. I think I've been sent the same colours in my four mils. Okay, and here are the golds. So this is your bright gold. This is your rose gold. And this is your champagne. So obviously the rose gold has a really beautiful pinky tinge to it. As you will know, it's my fave and I'm going to use it today. In fact, I might even use the champagne gold. So the difference between the bright gold and the champagne, so your bright gold is like an Indian gold. It's very yellow. It's um, beautiful and shiny, and that is really going to give you a gorgeous uh, finish to a lot of your bits and pieces. And this one is your champagne. A little bit softer, um, a little bit paler in colour, um, but still equally as beautiful. Okay, so now I've mixed up 
all of my colours and my sizes. Uh, so the, the jump rings I'm going to use today are a 4mm. And I know a lot of you get scared using 4mm because they are small. And I would always recommend with your chainmail, start in your bigger sizes. Learn a pattern in a 6, an 8 or a 10. And then once you've mastered it, you can start moving down in your sizes. Um, but a lot of weaves are very size specific. So you could actually do this today in an 8 and a 10 mil. That would be absolutely fine. I'm going to do it because I'm feeling brave in the 6s and 4s. So I've got my size 6 and then I've got my size 4s. And I'm going to use the rose. And the fantastic thing is, making earrings like this, you need minimal, minimal materials. Okay, so hopefully I've got some rose gold lovers out there because I am going to send you these earrings if you guess the right amount of lives. That's quite fun. Little, uh, little twist on today's video. I love chainmail, but I find it hard going, says Janice. Yeah, it, it can be. I'm not going to lie. Depending on the weave that you're doing, I'm going to show you this one. Um, many of you will know I started this <laughs> probably about a year ago and I have not finished and I'm gutted. But now that I've got my new jump rings, I'm actually going to remake it. So this actually might be a me project for Christmas. Um, haven't got much work on. I am taking time off can't quite believe it but I am um, so I'm gonna finish this now this is a Byzantine weave in four millimeter so it is teeny tiny um, it does take a while to grow it's an involved project um, you aren't looking at a quick fix um, but they're really really lovely look at how delicate it is when it's on as well beautiful little chain and these are the kind of chains that you will get in jewelers so these techniques that we're using byzantine um very often or byzantine depending on how you say it um very often these are very professional techniques and now you can start using them to make your own chain okay so earrings i'm going to do a helm weave so i'm actually going to work with my four millimeters to connect some of my sixes but um I did the bead one in black and loved it, says Mina. Oh, that's lovely. Jean, you've just answered my question. Oh, that's good, Jean, because... Oh, <laughs> she just asked if I'd finished my bracelet. No, Jean, I haven't. And I'm so sad because I'm, I'm desperate to wear it. But it's one of those where I really need the time to be able to sit down and have a good few hours to finish it. Um, and I am pretty short of time. <laughs> so I am... Um, that is going to be my, uh, my Christmas challenge. As well as finishing well i say finishing starting the chandelier that i'm building um and that i'm going to make for my study i'm desperate to do it and i just haven't had time so with your jump rings there are many weaves whereby you don't have to open all of your jump rings you don't have to work with all of them so for quite intricate projects for example like the byzantine you would think that you have to interlock every single one individually and you don't uh, which is really nice there are quick ways of doing it um, your tools are really important now with chainmail i know a lot of you will suffer with um, pain in your hands so a few top tips a lot of people hold their pliers in their hand like this and what that will actually do is put a load of pressure on the nerves and the endings and you'll end up with really sore thumbs so allow your thumb and your pliers to sit in line with each other so if you can see there a lot of people hold them like this and when you're squeezing it really does um, give you you know pain if you've been sat there for hours you're going to get um sore hands so allow your thumb to hold it and that and actually as you're squeezing it you can feel the difference when you're squeezing it in your hand it's it's quite sore it's putting a lot of pressure on that muscle and your nerves in the middle of your hand as soon as you swap to your thumb i promise you that's a game changer and i suffer quite a lot with my hands um i always know the day after i've been doing chain mail i do get very sore um so that is um, my top tip for you. 
Um, yes, I'm definitely going to make it time uh, for me over Christmas, Lorna. Thank you. Oh, Kitty, exactly like you and your penny table. Kitty and I have lined up our personal projects <laughs> for over Christmas that we haven't had time to do. Okay, so prep with chainmail. I'm actually going to open up a few of these to begin with. So you'll see that jump rings have a little slit in the middle of them. I'm taking my flat nose pliers holding it vertically down and then I'm going to take my round nose pliers I'm also going to hold vertically if you hold at the very point you will dent those pliers and it's hard to get that grip on it so I like to hold it vertically and we're just going to twist it open and by twisting it open this is now going to be ready for me to use now take your dominant hand towards you and that means that when they are facing on the mat the dominant side so my right side is facing up and that's going to make it easy for me to interlink into each other so good few top tips today so dominant side towards you so if you're left-handed of course you're going to bring the left towards you these are my working piles i don't need many of them probably six uh, for my earrings and this is in my six mil so for my helm earrings i'm only going to need those the rest of them i actually need them closed so can you see here this jump ring just straight out of the packet isn't lined up so what I want to do oh Kitty says she's even got a new table for it you know Kitty that table you sent me last night I was gonna reply and say that is just crying out to be filled with resin <laughs> but I wasn't sure if you thought about the other one for it so perhaps that is the one so all I'm going to do is nudge this so that it's completely closed and now this one I don't even have to work with an open or adapt when I'm making my pattern so I'm going to need quite a few I've got a feeling that might be my <coughs> delivery pulling up if it is guys I'm going to mute you so that you don't have to listen to Earl obviously he's saying that I'm to everybody Sounds like it might be. Thank you, Earl. Another one of Santa's little helpers making deliveries for me. The delivery guys this year. Man, we thought we'd been busy. Bear with me, guys. I'm just going to mute you for a second so you don't have to hear the madness. Okay, so sorry guys. Right, that's the last delivery for today. Right, so closed jump rings. I've got my open working pile and my closed pile. We should also count up how many lives I've had deliveries during, shouldn't we? <laughs> I think it's been every single one. Goodness me. Okay, so this is my closed pile. These are going to be picked up straight away. With my four millimeter jump rings, and I know that a lot of you struggle using them because they are so teeny tiny, but once you start mastering the techniques, I promise it will become simpler. Now, with these ones, because it's only got that ever such a slight gap in it, I actually just take my flat nose pliers and I can pinch it together. That's gonna allow me to close it completely shut without having to open up the whole thing entirely. And you'll notice that when it comes to holding it with my flat nose pliers, kind of just using the edge rather than the tool completely. So just pinch it together, close it off shut like so. And then that's how you would close them. And then opening them is exactly the same way as our larger jump rings. So twisting it open, my dominant side towards me. Okay, so to start off this weave, I'm gonna take my open jump ring and I'm gonna put on two of my closed jump rings. And actually I need another two because I'm gonna start building the weave really quickly. So I haven't had to open my larger ones, which would mean me opening four jump rings. So I've only opened one. It's going to make it nice and simple. Oh, Auntie Carol is saying good morning, Curly. 
Okay, so I'm going to close off this jump ring. Now, what I'll do is take the very tip of my round nose pliers. I'm also going to take the very tip of my flat nose pliers and I am pinching them together like so. Nice closed jump ring so they're really secure. And when I lie this flat, you'll see that I've got the beginnings of a lovely little chain. Now I'm going to open up a few of my fours. I should have opened them rather than closing them. Because now, if you have an open pile of working jump rings, you don't have to keep on stopping and starting in between your weaves. You can actually be holding your weave and in things like the Byzantine, you don't want to put that down because if you put it down, you're going to lose those lovely cages that you keep making. So to have an open pile just assists you as you're building the bits and pieces. Okay, so I'm going to take an open jump ring and I'm going to place that through the end too. This will be where I'm going to attach on my ear wire and beads. Now for the helm weave, what we do is add an additional jump ring just as a little feature and it sits right around this smaller jump ring. So it just interlocks into the middle. So what you want to make sure that you do what you want to make sure you do is, I'm just laughing at all of your guesses. It's really interesting. I can't wait to count them up now. I love it. How many lives since March, since we started doing them in lockdown? Okay, um, so we want to make sure that one end is closed. So I've got my four mil here and the other side is open. And by open, I mean that these jump rings will open up. Having it open like this is going to make... Um, make it much easier to insert this jump ring through the center if you close it off you're just going to start battling with everything so you wouldn't make your flat bracelet all the way and then add the extra pieces you could if you're using larger jump rings because it will be a bit bigger and a bit more open but for smaller ones like these it's easier to keep it open at one side okay so i am going to um open up this one and what I'm going to do is come in between my two larger jump rings on the left hand side. And you'll see I'm just poising the work on the edge of my finger. And I'm just going to open up. Your first one is always a little bit harder because there's not very much to hold on to. Open up these two at the base and insert this one through. I knew I shouldn't have put hand cream on either. <laughs> So I'm going around the um, four millimeter jump ring. Let's get this other one out of the way. Come down to the bottom. In between and opening them up. Now, if you struggle to open them up, you can actually use like a little eye pin or a needle or something just to open it up and make it a little bit easier. What I also do is I'm kind of rotating my left hand so that my jump ring is going to kind of shimmy round it. Goodness me. Right, hang on one sec. I think I'm going to have to add an eye pin onto the end to keep my other 4mm out of the way because it's being very troublesome. Hold on one sec, guys. I'm just going to grab a pin. And it's silly little top tips like these that will make it so much easier for you because if you are battling don't want anything to be hard for you or difficult so try to make it as easy as you can and giving yourself something to hold on to it's just like when you start your bead weaving projects the first couple are always a little bit trickier so this four millimeter jump ring on the end is causing me some issues getting in the way so what I'm going to do is just give myself an extension to my work. So now I've got something to hold on to, something to hold that four millimetre out of the way. And I'm just going to open up this little guy a little bit more. Now that should keep it out of my way, out of trouble. And open up my space so that I can get my jump ring straight through. she says. So I'm holding it in my left hand, opening up my space.
and I want it right in between these. Why on earth is this not behaving today? Come on. <laughs> it's me saying I'm going to show you one of the easiest weaves. Man, I've made so many of these. Why do we have days like this? Right. Clearly not my day. Right, so what I'm going to do in this case is completely take it off. Let's just do it this way. Not happening for me today. So I'm going to open up. So I've still got my two jump rings and a four mil in the middle. And don't ever feel bad, you know, if you're at home and you can't get something straight away, it doesn't mean you can't do it, it just means you have to adapt it. My hands are actually a bit shaky today, so it's probably why it's not going too well. You're struggling, what hope do we have? <laughs> yeah, if I'm struggling, what hope have you got? I promise, we'll make it easier now, look. So what I can do is open up the end, so this, four, uh, this six mil can come in between these two, and then we'll open up this far side. And like I said, I'm just going to rotate my wrist so that it can come all the way around. Open up this little gap here and it will go in between these two. So it's surrounding the entire four millimetre. And then what we'll do is close two up on top and two up on bottom. And now I can secure these with my four millimetres. And as soon as I do this bit, you'll see exactly what we've done. I'm wondering if I've actually picked the larger gauge six millimetre, which is why it probably wasn't springing into place. So can you see now I've got my six mil in between hugging all the way around that four. You're just very tired, Sarah. I am, Angela. <laughs> I am. And that's not always the best conditions to be doing things like this in, is it? But we get there. It's still not impossible. Like I said, you've just got to work out what it is you're struggling with. And in that case, I just couldn't open up those six mils to get my six in between it. So you just got to work out what it is and make it easy for yourself. So can you see now I've got a four mil holding them all together and wait till I turn this on the side, it's so pretty. It's got that six mil sandwiched in between it. Dorothy says, you're so right. I couldn't get the bauble netting going on Thursday evening and I looked at the pattern this morning and I had no issues. Just what happens sometimes. It is, and I know a lot of us kind of beat ourselves up about it and just think, oh, I can't, I can't get it or I can't do it. Sometimes you just got to, like I said, adapt it, see what you're struggling with, have a little look, um, and try and make it easier for yourself. It might just be how you're holding it. There's always a way around it. Okay, so that is actually going to be one of my earrings. That's the only section we need to do. So let's learn from that. I'm not going to close off one end. I'm going to keep it open. I'm going to take my four mil open and add on four of my closed six mils. And I can actually see that these are a little bit thicker. So maybe that's why. The funny thing is with um, chain mail, there are patterns that just will not work unless you have the right gauge and thickness of your jump rings. So also, that's a huge big factor. If you are using jump rings from your stash, so am I thinking the smaller all face one way? Yes, that's right. So your smaller ones, if I hold it like this, all of your smaller ones are sitting horizontally and all of your larger jump rings are sitting face up. So once I turn that around, it'll be exactly the other way. I've got all my four mil facing me and my six mil are all flat. So that's exactly it. So my four millimeter is connecting through here and then I'm gonna add in my six mil, which will go in between these two, 
come all the way around my four mil and then sit in between these two. So we'll do that again. Now that I've got my little section, I'm going in between, and I hope I hope you can see this okay, I'm sorry it's such a small piece, but in between my two six mil on the left hand side, and you split these open, so if I hold it here you'll probably see, all the way up and around, so you can just about see that middle jump ring, and then we'll split the top two, and because I've got it open, use that to your advantage, split them open, and you'll see I'm kind of using the edge of my jump rings to nudge and rotate that round, close off that six mil, and then these jump rings will come top and bottom, like so. So you're making that lovely little shape. And then I'm gonna close off the top and the bottom. So we're sandwiching it together with a four mil. So that will then hold the piece in place. Like so. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Now, if you wanted to then grow this into a bracelet, Obviously, it's going to be a little bit harder because you're, if you want to keep both sides open, so if you were struggling like I was this morning and you want to keep both sides open, I would suggest making lots of little sections just like that. And then when you're adding, um, when you're then going to add them all together, so for example, if I wanted to add all of these together to make um, my bracelet, obviously through this formula, I would need to attach both sides of my bracelet. So make sure you open it up so it's a little bit wider. And so if you want to grow it as a bracelet, I would add on two from here and then two from here. And what that will do is grow um, your bracelet little section by section. So rather than battling with it all, you can just add it together in smaller little sections. So you'll go through both of these and link those together. And then you can add in your extra six mil in the center. Now I'm gonna undo that one because I wanna make my earrings. And for anyone who missed the beginning, <clears throat> I set you a challenge to work out how many lives we've done uh, since the start of lockdown. And if you guess the right number, <laughs> Kitty says no one has guessed the right number yet. Someone was very close and only two off. <laughs> so if everybody just increases their count by two. <laughs> if no one actually guesses the real number, um, I'll, I'll do it to the closest. Um, so I was saying if you guess the right number, we'll, we'll select anyone who's guessed the right number and I will send you the earrings that I make today. Uh, as a little Christmas thank you. Okay, I'm just adding in one of my uh, one of my larger jump rings has just come out, so I'm just going to attach this through quickly so that we can finish off our earrings. Okay. Let's pop this one through. Wiggle that around. And we'll close this one off. Now I just need to grab uh, some of my findings. So I am going to add on some beads. I've got some lovely little crystals that will actually match. Let's get these out of the way. Oh, another delivery. Elle's gone to get the post. <laughs> he grabs the letters out of the letterbox and just runs off with them. So you never really know you've got post until you find it in his bed. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a head pin so that I can add on some ear wires. Where's all my nice rose gold ones? One in here. <clears throat> Should have an ear wire in here somewhere. 
as if I'm short of ear wires. What I'll do is, ah, my laptop is resting on my rose gold box. So I'll add a gold one on for now. But I promise when I send it to you, I'll fix it and replace it with the proper colours. For now, we'll go for a mixed metal look just because it's what I've got to hand. Not very well prepared today, am I? Sorry that this is my last one I'm leaving you with as well before Christmas. Oh, Kitty says, no, keep guessing. Okay, so I'm going to add a pin onto the bottom. Now, um, I'll find my rose gold ones in a minute, but the difference between your head and eye pin. So an eye pin is going to give you a continuous link. We're going to add beads onto it, and that will give you a connector, top and bottom. So this little loop will link onto lots of other things. Your head pin gives you that flush finish. Think of it as a full stop. So when you're adding charms on, so for example at the base here where I want to add a charm on, I'm going to have to give it a full stop. So I'll add my crystal on and I'm going to bend the pin to 90 degrees directly above the crystal. Now because I'm using crystals, I'm going to use my pliers as a barrier so that, oh Kitty says right next clue it's over 100. <laughs> now the numbers are coming in thick and fast. This is really fun. Is it all the lives? Just my ones Paula. How many lives I've done? since we started was it march the 23rd something like that it was when we went into lockdown how many lives i've done over the year and i'm going to count up later that's interesting i hadn't realized that kitty had already counted them and i was thinking to myself yesterday i'm going to count up how many live hours i've done on telly and how many lives i've done on here this year just so that i can warrant the amount of baileys and wine and food and sleep <laughs> I'm gonna have over the next two weeks <laughs> okay so I have bent my pin to 90 degrees I've cut and left a centimeter and now I'm gonna use my thumb as a stopper on the bottom I'm gonna use my finger to hold the bead and the pin is facing up to the ceiling so I'm gonna take my round nose pliers I'm gonna take it just about half a centimeter down from the tip and I'm just gonna roll my pin away from me. And that way, it's gonna meet the very top of my bead and create a little loop, like so. Now, you can either use that loop if you made it bigger, so left yourself more than a centimeter uh, when you trim that down. <gasps> Kitty says we've got the right guess. <laughs> exciting right someone's got a pair of earrings coming to them um and i'm going to pop this underneath so if you wanted to use your loop to attach onto the base here you could just make it bigger so further down your plier and more than a centimeter i'm going to open this up exactly the same way as we did it with our jump rings by lifting it up connecting it onto the ring at the very bottom and bringing it down so now as an earring I've got a lovely droplet on the bottom as well and it would give it that movement. This as a weave is quite rigid because it's all of those uh, jump rings sandwiched together. So it's really nice to have that little bit of movement so that when you're wearing them, it just catches your eye and it gives that little glimmer. And then we'll do the same thing up at the top. I know this is gold. I will find my rose gold as soon as I'm finished with you. And I will make it a nice complete pair of earrings for you. So you'll just lift up your ear wire and bring that down. Now, the issue with this is, can you see, when this is in your ear, because of the way that the jump rings change direction, it's flat, which we don't want. We want it to be on the side so that you can see that weave. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Either, if you've got good quality ear wires, you could take this top bit, and I don't, these aren't my good ones from Totally Beads, but we'll try it you can rotate it to the side so that that hook is now not facing vertically, it's face on. And that would mean now when I attach this in, it has rotated round and it will face the right way. If your ear wires, because sometimes they will snap when you do that, you just need to change direction and every time you add on a jump ring, it will face the opposite direction. So really simple things, if you want to change the direction of something, add another ring so you can add on another four mil add that onto the bottom and add that onto your earring i 
And now by doing that, just nudge that form in along so it's flat. Now by doing that, I have changed the direction. So anytime you need to flip something over, just add another jump ring in and that will be that for you. Okay, so I will finish the other earring for you. I'll add on nice little findings. In fact, I might, if I've got small enough, I'll add a little Swarovski crystal on there for you as well. Um, and whoever has guessed the right, uh, the right number, at the moment, I think we've just got one person. So the earrings are yours. If anybody else guesses, when shall we say? Shall I finish it tomorrow morning? So we'll finish tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. is cut off. And then that will give anyone a chance who's at work and won't maybe see this. Um, um, anyone who is at work and then um, there's less than one. What do you mean, Kitty? Less than one. I don't know. Um, we'll do a cutoff because then anyone who watches it tonight will still be in for a chance for winning as well. Um, thank you so much, guys. I have to say an amazing thank you for absolutely everything this year. Um, oh, it's making me a bit emo signing off this. Oh, dear. It's been an amazing year. Um, you've helped us all through so much. And thank you for all your support. Oh, how ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get upset. Oh, um, thank you for watching all the lives, all your interaction, putting up with all my rubbish, <laughs> with the uh, deliveries and everything else as well. It's been an absolute pleasure. Enjoy your Christmas. Have an amazing time. And love to you all. Stay safe.